Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095, Basic Algebra. This is section 11.6. It deals with variation and problem solving. And the key to this section is actually knowing the terminology. The first thing we're going to look at is an application of this. Let's say we have a square. We know that a square, by definition, has all four sides the same. If I wanted to find the perimeter, I know that the perimeter of a square is 4 times the size. Because all sides are the same, we would add them up 4 times s. So if the perimeter is 4s, we can also say the perimeter varies directly as s. Or we'd say the perimeter is directly proportionate to the side. Now, <clears throat> it has a constant of variation, because there are constantly four sides to every square. And we'll see how we define this constant of variation. For this example, it's 4. So like I said, dealing with the terminology is crucial for this section. So the first thing we're going to define is direct variation, such as a square. What it says is y varies directly as x, or y varies proportionally to x with a variation of a proportionality, also known as a constant of variation. So this has two terms that we use interchangeably, the constant of proportionality or the variation constant. Now, why do we call it direct variation? Well, it has to do with the variables and their relationship to each other. If x increases and k is just a constant, some number as we see here, if y is to increase, x has to increase. They go in the same direction, direct variation. If this increases, this value will also increase proportionally. So <clears throat> when we're dealing with direct variation, our constants go in the same direction. They're proportional. If we look at inverse variation, this is the next term that we have to be familiar with. Inverse variation means the opposite of direct are going to go in opposite directions, or inverse. If y is to increase in value, then x has to decrease. Because if we divide by a smaller number, the value gets bigger and bigger. So they go in opposite directions or inverse directions. So we would say something of this nature. We'd say y varies inversely with x. Or we might say y varies inversely or is inversely proportional to x with a constant of variation. Every one of these variation problems will have a constant of variation. The last term that we have to be familiar with is joint variation. Now, joint variation is very similar to direct variation. The only difference is it means we have more than one variable. So if we look at this equation, what it says is y varies jointly as x and z, or y is proportional to the product of x and z. Now, with, a, again, a constant of variation k. So if y is to increase in value, the product of these two, x and z, have to increase. Their product has to increase. If y is going to decrease, this value also has to decrease, just like direct variation, except we have more than one variable. And we call that joint variation. So let's look at some examples. The first example we have here, it says, if v varies directly with t, find the constant of variation and the variation equation. So we have to find two pieces. We're given the information v is 16 when t is 2. So to build the equation, we draw our attention to the terminology. It varies directly. That means v is going to vary directly as t with a constant of variation. This is one of the things we need to find. So let's take this information and put it in. We know v is 16 when t is 2. Now, <clears throat> with this given information, we can now solve for our constant of variation or our constant of proportionality. To get k by itself, I divide both sides by 2. And I find k would equal 8. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Now that I know this, which is the constant of variation which I was asked to find, 
I now can build the variation equation, the other piece that I was asked to find, by essentially taking this and putting in my value for k. So these were the two pieces I was asked to find. And I'm going to reread it. v varies directly as t with a constant of variation of 8. Let's look at another example. It says if v varies inversely with the square root of x, find the constant of proportionality and the variation equation. Now, this isn't much different than the previous question, except it says inversely. And it says constant of proportionality instead of constant of variation. But those two terms are uh, interchangeable. So the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality means the same thing. I'm looking for that value of k. We have to find what k is. And then put it together to build our equation. So if y varies inversely, which means something has to go in the denominator, with the square root of x, to find the variation constant, we have to put it in. Now, with the given information, we're told y is 4 when x is 9. I'm just going to plug those values in. y is 4 when x is 9. And now I can simplify this. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. So I'll write it over here. Now, to get k by itself, I want to undo this division. So I'd multiply both sides of the equation by 3. And I get 12 equals k. So now that I have the constant of variation, I still need to put it together to get the variation equation. So I take this and just replace k with 12. y equals 12 divided by the square root of x. y varies inversely as the square root of x with a constant of proportionality of 12. So that's how we would read this variation. All right. One more example before we get to an application. This says, find the constant of variation and the variation equation if t varies jointly with x and the square of d. So we got to be a little careful here because it's not just a single variable. Jointly means we're working with multiple variables. And in the last example, we saw the square root of x well, we might have operations on these variables, so we have to read very carefully. Find the constant of variation and the variation equation if t varies jointly with x and the square of d. Well, that means I take d and square it. Now, I have to remember, every variation equation has a constant of proportionality. So I wrote out the equation, translated it, knowing that terminology. And now I take the given information. t is 18 when x is 1 and d is 3. So if d is squared, I would square that 3 with some constant of variation. Now that I have this equation in a single variable, I can simplify it and solve for k. Well, we know our order of operations. So 3 squared is 9. And 9 times 1 is just 9. So I'd have 9 times k or k times 9. And then we can divide both sides by 9 to get k by itself. And we get k equals 2. Now that we know our constant of proportionality, we can rewrite our equation. t varies jointly as x and the square of d with a constant of variation of 2. t equals 2. So we have this joint variation. All right. In some applications, we're going to see a combination of maybe a joint and an inverse or direct and inverse variations of equations. So let's read this application here. It says, the maximum weight that a rectangular beam can support varies jointly as its width and the square of its height, and inversely as its length. So we have two parts. We have a joint variation and an inverse variation in a single equation. So how do we translate that? Well, it says a rectangular beam can support, and I'm going to use the variables s. It can support uh, if it varies jointly as its width. And the square of its height 
And inversely, inverse tells me something's going to go in the denominator, inversely with its length. Now, I'm almost there. I have to remember every variation equation has a constant of proportionality. So I'm just going to plug in my k, put a k in there. Now, <clears throat> we're given the information. If we have a beam with a width of 1 third, a height of 1, and these are feet, a length of 10 feet, it can support three tons. Maybe this is something that they you know, took a beam of these dimensions and found, hey, it can support three tons before it begins to bend or break. What can it support? So let's plug that inf given information into this equation because it doesn't tell us what the constant of variation is. We have to find that. So it can support three tons if the beam is 1 third of a foot wide and 1 foot tall, and that height is squared, but inversely with 10 feet. Now, we put in that constant of variation. There is a single variable we can solve for that. So let's get rid of this denominator, this fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. And I'll simplify this, 1 third times 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is just 1 times a third. So we'd have 1 third k. And to get rid of this fraction, I can multiply both sides by 3, that common denominator again. And I get 90 equals k. 30 times 3 is 90. 1 third times 3 is 1k, or just k. So now I have the constant of variation. I can go back to this equation and just put it in. So I'll know my variation equation is 90wh squared over l. This is my variation equation, s, or what the support of 90 width times height squared divided by length. Now we can use this equation to find the support that any dimension of beam can support. So if we look at this one here, it says beam number 2, we have a width of 1 foot, a height of 1 third of a foot, the length of 9 feet. And we're asked, how much weight can this support? So if we plug this in, we don't know what s is, so that'll be our variable. But we do know what k is, and we know that it varies jointly with the width and the square of its height, and inversely with its length. So we just plug the information we're given into our variation equation, and then we can simplify this. Well, 1 third squared is 1 ninth. And 1 ninth times 1 is 1 ninth. And 1 ninth times 90 is 10. So once I'm done simplifying, I have 10 ninths. 10 ninths what? Well, we could do this division. We'll get a repeating decimal whenever we divide by 9. So we'd get 1.1 repeating. So I'm just going to leave it as a fraction so we don't have to deal with that. Because this is an application problem, we have to remember units. What are my units? There are tons. We were asked, how much can this beam support? So we get it can support 10 ninths of one ton. So this has been section 11.6. Thank you for watching.